since 2021. This economy, this Biden inflation, this way of looking at monetary funds, the way we spend, has taken from the taxpayer's home 25920 Now, what is that saying? That is saying if you are not making an extra $25,000 since 2021, inflation, Biden's economics, and the way we've done business in America has hurt you. I don't know a lot of people that's made $25,000 extra dollars that is middle class or what we consider normal Americans. That is a big number. It said if you were not making 20% more than what you were making in 2021, you have lost revenue and you can't afford the, the necessities like you did afford back in 2021. Are we really better off than we were? That's just one facet of a bad economy. New numbers came out from the Fed yesterday which is gonna blow your mind. They wanna spend it as good, but you're missing the biggest point. One other thing, did you hear about what Saudi Arabia just did with the dollar? Let's talk about it today. We got time on our side. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell. Thumbs up means the world to me. I humbly ask if you like the content, give us a thumbs up, comment below, tell us what you think. Also, when you share, it helps us to grow as a community and helps us be wiser and have a better common sense approach to the world that we live in. Now, today we're talking about budgeting. We're talking about the worry of the dollar and how is the dollar going to crash this week? No, you doubt it, but it could. Uh, I want to bring up to a major point that Saudi Arabia came out and he warned us. He said, you know, for the longest, you keep on doing stupid things, you're going to win stupid prizes. Well, this week, Saudi Arabia came out and said, our agreement with the petrodollar, meaning everybody is having to purchase their petroleum from Saudi Arabia with the dollar. Well, since we started doing sanctions against Russia and we started playing stupid games, we're winning stupid prizes. This week, Ben Salman came out and said that he will take payments of other sorts open to the market. I'll take in rubles, rupees, take in yuan, I'll take it in whatever you want to bring to me. No longer do I have this agreement that was set up for the petrodollar. Do you realize the world currency and the dollar was strong based on the fact that American sovereignty and freedom and the strength of American financial institutions, but also the petrodollar. The people had to buy their petroleum, their goods, their needs in dollar bills so they had to exchange their money to have dollars to then purchase for saudi arabia that is what made america strong well our economy has been tanking forever the more that we're putting sanctions yes there's a new report that came out and said that the ruble and russian uh, economy is struggling also the chinese economy is struggling well guess what the american economy is struggling what looks best right now was well, this the time where the dollar and all the other currencies struggle and we just have to go to some new system? Isn't it amazing how simple this is if you think with the common sense approach that the more that these economies start faltering, the easier it is to get away from fiat or from tangible money and go to the, something that's so new and so awesome. What about that new Apple Pay that we talked about the other day? I'm gonna bring in another story that should scare the mess out of you when it comes to biometrics and phones and paying not paying with credit cards, paying with this or this. Are we looking at end times kind of thing? MasterCard launches a biometric retail payment system in Europe using Poland as a testing ground. What it will do is you will be able to use not only your phone, not only your card, not only cash right now, but you're gonna start using your biometrics, your fingerprints, your eyes. You know your eyes tell more of a story of who you are and identification than your fingerprint. So we're gonna start using some kind of buried chip, some kind of biometric in your thumb or your eye. Boy, does that not sound biblical. MasterCard's global biometric checkout program represents the first of its kind of technology and will help reestablish the new ways of pay, a very new normal when you can pay with your palm, your face, or your iris. This simplifies checkout and makes things convenient. What did we talk about with the Apple Pay the other day? The convenience element. Well, we have been in a convenience way for so long that we have convenienced our way out of security, freedom, liberty, and also our economy. The reason our inflation, the reason the interest is up, and they came out this week that Fed Chair is not going to lower the rates. 
well, we don't need lower rates because people have spent way too much money. We actually need people not borrowing money now. And if they are, they have to take the risk of paying it back. That is the only way that we can get inflation down. Now, they're giving you false numbers and saying, well, inflation, it's went down like a percent, a point. No, they're just taking certain data out of the reading to confuse you to think that Bidenomics is working, which is not. The problem is not just how bad our politicians are at spending our money. The fact is we're bad at holding our money. We're spending money we don't have. So I believe higher interest is actually a good thing right now because it hopefully will make people rain down on their own spending. But do you hear what it said? Convenience. If it's so easy to do two-day shipping and buy this thing tomorrow, if it's so easy to just turn around and say, you know what, I can use this credit system instead of using cash, is it so? if it's so easy to just buy now, pay later, then we tend to use those conveniences and then all of a sudden we have a true crap hits the fan situation in our own lives where we can't pay those things back. A job gets cut, maybe your hours get cut, maybe the fact that our groceries have went up 40%. So therefore, we, now we can't afford those things that we have promised ourselves to afford. Well, that's exactly what's happening on the world stage too. Uh, Saudi Arabia, when they're coming out saying, look, you've caused so much problems and animosity across the world in making this divided system, not only with Israel, but really more with Russia, which was the Saudi Arabian push at first. They were saying, how can you hurt someone else's currency? What if you tried to do that to us? So they started realizing, well, let's start taking a little bit in rubles. Let's start taking a little bit in rupees. Let's start taking a little bit in, in yuan and yen. And that made for a broken system. Now, here's the biggest report that uh, a Biden administration came out and said, well, look, our sanctions are working. People are running to the bank in Russia to change out their rubles for dollars. Well, that's, that is right, but that's also half right. Because what we're doing is, it's like you're saying this, my building is burning and so I'm gonna light your building on fire and we're gonna see which one burns faster. Do you get what I'm saying? China's doing the same thing. China's economy is very strong. However, that is because their export business is very strong. Their housing market, their mortgage crisis, their issues where they've built so much infrastructure they can't afford, they're having the same problem. So now it's a race to the bottom when it comes to the world powers. I think that that's why they're pushing for war so much because war makes economies grow. It's so sad, but it's the truth. And your leaders, our elected officials, are the ones buying into that system to say, you know what, it's okay. It's okay if a loss of life comes. It's okay if we go to war and destroy half our countries. We have an economic build back because then we have to invest money. That's exactly what's happening in Ukraine. Ukraine is going to be a heap where generations of people dying, but then all of a sudden there has been released contracts of hundreds of billions of dollars of rebuilt for all the companies that are tied to our stock market that's tied to all these big wealthy businessmen uh, such as your BlackRock and all those. So it's all just a game to them. All the while you're the one that's being held out to dry. Think about it. If the dollar crashes and your money is already struggling, you will be susceptible to whatever they tell you. So say for instance, average Americans have less than 60% of Americans, all right, now listen to this. 60% of Americans cannot live two days on their pantry. We've talked about that before. The average American household has three to $10,000 worth of credit card debt. The average American household has a mortgage and either one or two car payments that is over 50% of their bring home in income, meaning their house and their automobiles, their debts are costing more than half their income, plus the discretionary debt such as credit cards. So what most people are in are in a pickle. So say the dollar crashes, the ruble crashes, the yen crashes, whatever other money uh, crashes. And all of a sudden the dollar loses its value because it's not the currency anymore because remember, Saudi Arabia just said, we're not worried about it being the petrodollar, which is what held the stabilization of the currency that Kissinger and all of them kind of negotiated when they got away from the gold standard. If that happens, and they say, well, now we know your dollars are not worth anything. Now we know you're in debt up to your eyeballs, but your bank, they're gonna give you a, a, a way out. They're going to give you a holiday. What they're going to do is they're going to turn around and say, okay, for every dollar that you have, we're going to give you $2 of digital currency. For every debt that you have, if you pay it in digital currency, it's going to double the value. So basically, it's like your, your debt went in half. Do you know how many people would sign up for that? Tons. Millions of people. Because they're in debt up their eyeballs. They need the help. 
The reason I preach to you each and every day about putting food up and buying other currencies and trying to figure out how to hold on to asset value, not just with cash, not just with putting your money in the bank, not just with trusting debts. The reason we talk about that is because I'm trying to make it where you're not gonna be so dependent on the system. Remember, we talked about yesterday how they're hurting the food system. Well, if they hurt the backyard chicken and they hurt the, the backyard livestock growing, and then all of a sudden they hurt your dollar, then what do you actually have? You have a system where you are needing the government to step in. There's a bit, there's a Breitbart article that said that what the Fed is actually saying is they're telling you that higher rates will be here probably inevitable. They keep saying, well, they're gonna look at September again. They're gonna look at the ways that we can maybe lower rates. The bottom line is they can't. If they start lowering rates and we're spending like we're doing, there's not enough money in our system to hold the inflation down. We're actually having way too much dollars and not enough goods in which is making our dollars more worthless. So your interest rates are not dropping, mortgage rates are not dropping, and we're probably not looking at any other ways of getting inflation down or interest down because of the way we're going in our economy. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I drove around, um, we, we were going out of a different part of town and there was like three or four houses being built um, there was two new businesses putting up uh, buildings. And, and in our finite mind, we're like, wow, economy must be doing good because people are building again. Consumers are needing these properties. The sad reality is people had cash, now they don't. These businesses are now utilizing it to save money maybe on taxes or maybe to say we need to spend some of this so maybe we can get our profits back up, we can grow our business, we can build our home, our, the one that we've wanted forever. And what we're doing is we're actually going further and further and further in debt in our economy thinking it's going to get better because that's what our government has told us, that it's going to get better, that everything is moving in the right direction. Now, I know in sales, you want to sell somebody on that. And I know Biden's job is to sell you the economy's doing great. His, you know, his pundits are out there selling the fact that his economy's doing better and it's growing and being better. It's actually not. The sanctions are not working. The fact that Saudi Arabia came out and, and he, America's played this down as like, well, look, the petrodollar, that's not a big deal anymore. It's a huge deal. That's like a black swan event deal. At any point in time, if they say no, we're not taking any more dollars. First of all, what if all these countries said, you know, well, there's no value in buying the dollar. They start flooding our dollars back at home, which of course tanks our dollar. Now lastly, back to the MasterCard story about the, bio, about the biometrics. Is this exactly what they're wanting? A black swan event to a financial situation to where it basically benefits everybody. It gets them out of debts because what's gonna happen is the government allows them to kind of reset the whole economy kind of like they did back when they got off the gold standard. What if they reset it again and say, well, you know, it helps us get out of debt. It helps you get rid of your debt by going on this new system with CBDC. It's almost like a fresh start. They won't call it a reset, they'll call it a fresh start. We're gonna give you double the value of your dollars. That's gonna be the sales pitch. And it's gonna happen in every country because every country is going, like I said, the burning building and seeing which one can burn faster. That's exactly what's happening. So in, then in steps digital currency. BRICS is doing the same thing. You can hear all the good things about all these different currencies, but bottom line is all of them are crashing to a point where they're gonna be looking to a digitized form of it. Scary thing is people are embracing crypto and I think that is just helping predictably program you for a digitized currency. Here I am, I'm trying to be old school, holding on to the things that actually matter, things that you can tangibly have. You know what squash and plums and cucumbers and peas and potatoes I've put up this week? to a point where I don't want to even see a garden. <laughs> you know me, you know, I, you know, I processed two uh, steer last week. I'm fixing to process three hog this next week. I've got 50 chickens I'm fixing to butcher in about, about a month. Why do I do that? Why do I work so hard to do that? Because I know there's the value. Food, safety, security. It can't be found in the dollar. It can't be found in our government. And it sure can't be found anything that we hold debt with. Try to value understanding money better. And when you understand money better, then you're gonna realize the dollar bill or the fact of crypto or the fact of this new currency or the fact of uh, the Fed telling us it's getting better or Bidenomics is telling us it's getting better, it's all a farce. And one day we're gonna wake up and see the market completely crash because we're gonna realize, wow, we actually did not have it right. That Saudi Arabia thing was a black swan event. 
wow, we actually are in debt up to our eyeballs. Our country's in debt up to our eyeballs and no one has any money in them. We can't pay our taxes. We can't pay our goods. And so therefore we are dependent on the government. Government can always figure out their problem. You on the other hand, you're not as independent as you thought because then you're going to be relying more on the government to feed your family. And that's what I'm trying to convince you now. Start making wiser decisions with your money. Quit spending money you don't have. Quit buying things you don't need. And start understanding that these things, these black swan events, all this stuff, like Russia sitting at our back door, the fact that our dollar is now, now not on the world currency when it comes to the petrodollar, it being valued to where people had to buy. The fact that now we're looking at more wars and rumors of war. How has that become the new normal? What we've done is we've heard it so much, we've heard all this so much, of all this bad news that we've been predictively programmed that it's all okay and that it'll all go away and it's all gonna get better. Actuality, I think you're gonna see a, a kind of a, a black swan event that's gonna take us to a point of, oh my gosh, I never saw this coming. So let's wrap it up. Biometrics is coming in. Are you willing to scan your finger, scan your eyes, or put something in your palm to use money? No. Most people say no. All of a sudden, you're in debt up to your eyeballs. You have no way to live. You have no way to put, you have no way to keep a, a, a shelter over you. Your children are hungry. You have no way to pay your debts, no way to pay your taxes, and the government steps in and says, okay, will you do this now because I'm willing to pay all your goods for you. I want to give you a fresh start. I want to feed your family. Are you willing to do it now? I bet there's a lot of people that would change their mind. That's what we have to pay attention to. That is the black swan event that I think we will see rumblings of more and more before the election. I challenge you, please get on a written budget. Please save as much money as you can. Start buying things with your cash and with your uh, money, paying off your debts, but also buying things that are assets. You don't have to grow thousands of acres of food. Just start buying some freeze-dried food. Start buying from local farmers so that you can put up more. Start buying the freezer to put it in. Learn to find ways to be more independent. That's my challenge for you today. Because if you're looking for the government to fix it, buying anonymous is not fixing it. The Fed is not fixing it. Your interest rates are gonna be higher. Your inflation's not going down. And all of a sudden now the world is trying to destroy our currency like we've been trying to destroy theirs for so long. That is a black swan event I don't think we're ready for. Be prepared, stay vigilant, love God and follow his guidance and then ultimately start gaining some wisdom of how we live in a chaotic world. Thank you for watching, God bless.